Did you know that conical sections play a critical role in engineering, from designing satellite dishes to optimizing structural curves? Understanding how to classify and analyze these curves is a key skill that you'll need to pass the FE exam. In this week's Pass the FE exam video, we will tackle a conical section problem step by step will help you determine the center of the curb and identify its type. By the end of this video, you'll have the tools and the confidence to handle similar questions like this with ease on the FE exam. This problem was created and solved by mechatronic engineer Shante Thunderspay and is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. In this question, we are presented with the general equation of a conic section, and our job can be split up into two main objectives. First, we need to determine the center of the conic section, and secondly, we must identify the type of conic section it represents. Before diving into the solution, let's take a moment to review some essential concepts that'll help us approach this problem effectively. We start off by looking at what a conic section refers to. This can be defined as any curve formed by the intersection of a plane with a right circular cone, as illustrated here. The type of curve, whether it's an ellipse, parabola, circle, or hyperbola, depends on the angle at which the plane intersects the cone. Mathematically, we can distinguish between the different curves created by this intersecting plane using two key angles. The first angle, denoted as theta in the FE handbook, represents the angle between the intersecting plane and the vertical axis of the cone. The second angle, phi, is the vertex angle measured between the vertical axis of the cone and its slanted outer surface. If these two angles are known, we can calculate what is referred to as the eccentricity of the conic section using the formula E is equal to cosine of theta divided by cosine of phi. This eccentricity can help us classify the different curves. For example, an ellipse has an eccentricity of less than one, while a parabola has an eccentricity equal to one. Beyond this classification scheme, the FE handbook also provides us with the standard equations for each conic section. These equations not only define the shape of each curve, but also provides us with key information, such as the center of each curve. The FE handbook defines this center as H and K for each curve, as present within their standard forms. The equation given in this question is in its general form, but to find the center of the curve, we need to rewrite it into its standard form to identify these h and k values. To start off, we group the x and y terms together, as shown here, dividing out any constants associated with the squared x and y terms. Once grouped, we can proceed by completing the square for the x terms. This involves taking the coefficient of the x term, dividing it by 2, and squaring the result. To maintain equivalence in this equation, this squared value is both added and subtracted within our brackets. This step ensures the expression can be factored into a perfect square trinomial, bringing us closer to the standard form. At this stage, we can simplify our squared terms to find that they both equal 9. From here, the first three terms within the brackets can be easily factored into x negative 3 squared using either mental math or a calculator. However, it's important to remember that the negative 9 term does not disappear. It forms part of the question, ensuring we maintain equivalence to the original form. Next, we apply the same process to the y terms. To complete the square, we take the coefficient of y, divide it by 2, and then square the result. The square value is added and subtracted within the brackets as before. And once this adjustment is made, the first three y terms can be factorized into x plus 2 squared, with the subtracted constant remaining outside of the factorized expression. 
with the squares now completed. Our next step is to simplify the equation. First, we multiply all the terms inside the brackets with the constants outside to eliminate them. Then, we move all remaining constants to the right side of the equation, resulting in the simplified form shown here. When we compare this result to the standard forms of conic section equations, we can clearly see that it matches the equation of an ellipse. If we needed to determine the values of a and b in the standard form of the equation, we could divide the entire equation by the constant on the right-hand side to normalize it. However, since the problem only asks us to find the center of the curve, this additional step is unnecessary, since these values are already present within our brackets. From the standard form of the equation, we know that the center corresponds to the h and k values. And in this case, h is equal to 3 and k is equal to negative 2. And since we've already confirmed that our equation represents an ellipse, we can now inspect the multiple choice options, where we find that the correct answer is a. It's worth noting that the way these multiple choice options are presented could easily cause confusion, especially if small mistakes are made. First, remember the distinction between the signs of h and k in the equation versus their coordinates. In other words, be careful not to misinterpret the center as negative 3 and positive 2 by incorrectly swapping the signs. Second, the question indirectly tests our ability to distinguish between an ellipse and a hyperbola. The key difference lies in the sign between the two squared terms in the standard form, positive for an ellipse and negative for a hyperbola. When working quickly, it's easy to confuse the two, so always double check the equation to ensure that you accurately identify the curve, especially when using this method of visual inspection. Finally, it's important to note that the FE handbook provides specific conditions to help us differentiate between the various conic sections using the original general equation. While this problem required us to write the equation in standard form to find the center, for simpler questions where we only need to identify the type of curve, these conditions can offer a much quicker approach. To demonstrate how these conditions work, let's use the criteria for an ellipse to verify our answer. According to the general form provided in the FE handbook, we identify the coefficients a, b, and c. In this question, b is equal to zero, as there is no xy term. And additionally, a is equal to nine, and c is equal to 16. Substituting these values into the condition b squared negative 4ac, we find that the expression equals negative 576. Since the value is less than zero, it confirms that the curve is indeed an ellipse. This method provides a useful cross-check for visual inspection, ensuring that our answer is consistent and accurate. And that wraps up our problem. By carefully following the steps, we've determined with confidence that the correct answer is equal to A, where the ellipse has a center of 3 and negative 2. This result aligns perfectly with both our analysis of the standard form and the conditions provided in the FE handbook, confirming the accuracy of our solution. To conclude, here are some key takeaways from this problem. First of all, be sure to practice transforming general expressions to their standard form. The FE handbook provides us with a range of plug-and-play formulas that help us identify key features, but in order to use them, you'd first need to identify the terms from the standard form. However, for quicker identification of the type of curve, remember that you can also apply the conditions outlined in the FE handbook directly to the general form of the equation. This can save you some valuable time in certain scenarios. Next, it's important to pay close attention to the signs in your equations, particularly when determining the center of a curve from its standard form. Small errors in signs can lead to incorrect results, especially when evaluating multiple choice questions. And finally, familiarize yourself with the differences in the standard equations for each conic section. For example, here, we recognized how the positive or negative signs between terms may distinguish an ellipse from a hyperbola. By keeping these points in mind and practicing similar problems, you'll easily develop the skills and confidence needed to tackle conic section questions efficiently and accurately. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will answer more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Past the FE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button 
as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions like this one weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below that I will read and respond to in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic you want me to cover or a question you need answered. Pass the FE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam.